Hi, I'm Mirna and I'm with Mendalia TV. We are here with Angel Ribot and we are going to be talking with him a little bit about his passion. Angel, hi. Hi, how are you? So blessed to have you here today. Thank you, thank you for having me. We've heard amazing things about you. We've been sharing with you the last couple of days. We want to find out more. Now it's your turn to talk. We want to know about what your job is. Thank you. So what I do for a living is actually CEOs, corporate CEOs hire me to bridge the gap globally for expansion and exposure. I basically help them to go international. There's a secret, there's a master to do that, and I have learned that throughout the last 19 years. I've helped, I've helped more than 1,500 CEOs. Uh, but my life purpose, my, my real purpose in this, in this life is uh, to help underprivileged kids in Latin America become entrepreneurs using their local resources. That's what I really like to do. That sounds amazing. And uh, when, when did that start for you? Like, how did you realize that whatever you were doing for, for a living, you know, for a monetary uh, purpose wasn't enough? What triggered in you? Yes, yeah, so it was 2015 and I was, uh, I already lived in the U.S. I've lived in the U.S. for seven years and I was traveling to Mexico at that time. I was uh, finishing a week, you know, very long week of work. And again, something happened again which is i was late on friday i couldn't catch my flight to go back to texas where i live and i had to stay for one more day in 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 mexico city and i remember it was saturday morning i was in the hotel room hotel room uh, of a very nice uh, hotel in the reforma avenue in mexico city i was having a shower and suddenly out of nowhere, I really can't explain it in any other way, out of nowhere, uh, I started to cry like a baby. And um, it's funny, I, I'm just remembering it now very, very vividly. Uh, the first thing I thought when I was having that experience was all those trips throughout the entire Latin American continent for more than 14 years, all those companies I had visited, all those manufacturing companies I was serving throughout my job, throughout my work, around those places in Latin America, there were a lot of kids, poor kids, underprivileged kids, that were asking me to buy from them maybe some chewing gum, some candies, or, uh, hey, sir, can we, you know, clean your windscreen from your car? So there's 81 million kids in Latin America that live in, uh, you know, underprivileged conditions. So. I was under shower, I was crying, and this, you know, all those images of me being in Latin America for so many years, going to all those places, typically manufacturing companies and are on suburban areas, sometimes in rural areas, with a lot of underprivileged communities, people that live in, in needy conditions. Uh, at the same time, um, I had developed all those relationships in all those countries. I, I was for, since 2001 until 2016, I was, uh, going continuously to Latin America to talk to, uh, to developing relationships with people, with clients, with partners. So I was in that shower that day in Mexico City and all those things came together and suddenly they made sense. So all the things I had done for a living and all those kids and on top of that my mom is a school teacher. Always, I was always thinking that I would have a very big family at that point in time, I already had three kids. I love kids. So that was the origin. That was, that's why I decided in that very same moment, I decided I know now what my life purpose is. I have to use all my power, all my connections, all my partnerships, all my friendships to help the 81 million kids uh, that are in need in Latin America. How do you reach out to them? How do you know which is the chosen one, the one that is going to be receiving your benefits? Because I'm pretty sure that the density of these people is so high that it must be kind of hard to point the one that is going to be, or the ones that are going to be receiving the help. Yes, so basically we have found out that, uh, stu studying or looking at the statistics, we have found out that there's basically th like three areas that have a different grades of uh, poverty. So there's the suburban areas, there's the rural areas, and there's the indigenous areas. Uh, there's around 50% of poverty in suburban areas. So let's say 
half of the kids you see when you go to a suburban area are going to be needy. 75% um, in rural areas are going to be in need of your assistance. And almost 90% of kids in indigenous areas, they need us. So we go there, literally we go there, we physically go there, we identify communities, we identify community leaders, people that have some sort of influence in those communities. We sit down with them and we tell them, hey, you know, we are Wisdom for Kids, Niños Sabios in Spanish, and we would like to help your kids in, the, in your community to become an entrepreneur. Entrepreneur means that we would like to give them another opportunity in their lives. And we obviously, we want to involve you, we want to involve their families, whatever makes sense to you. You tell us where you want us to be, when, and we, we will be with you and with them, and we will start this journey of them, those kids becoming entrepreneurs. What type of information do you provide them? Like economics or...? That's a, that's a very good question. So we spend almost two years, <laughs> almost two years really coming up with a very powerful workshop. Very, very powerful. It's completely unconventional. It's not like we have a whiteboard and we start drawing things. No, that's not what we do. It's extremely, it's a very high energy uh, workshop. So just to give you an example, if it was me doing it, okay, so I have a wireless speaker Okay, a wireless speaker on my hand. I put a very powerful music, it, it, it varies what music it is. And then I start, I ask the kids, okay, so please, could you start mimicking me? Could you start trying to do the same thing I do? So picture this, I'm jumping, I'm doing silly things, and we are for five minutes with all those kids that they don't know what I am there, there for, mm -hmm. but they already are, are starting to have an amazing experience with us and with me. Connecting probably. Exactly, connecting. And you see, I, I mean, I see their faces and they have so much fun. And again, we jump, we, we play, we exercise, we work out, I, I turn around, you know, we hold hands. We, I mean, we do all sorts of things for these first five minutes. And that's the, only the start, the starting point. Then we keep on, we talk about self-esteem, that's very important, obviously, for them. We talk about values, we talk about health, uh, we talk about uh, what kind of work they would like to do. We ask them, hey, what would you like to do when you grow up? And then everybody says a different thing, and then we'd say, okay, so it's good, it's perfect, you know? And we start, throughout the entire workshop, it's a two-hour workshop, we start uh, crafting the concept of being a wise kid, being a niño sabio. So a wise kid is a kid that is happy, is a kid that you know, likes everything, likes everyone, that is good with everything. Regardless of the job they would like to do when they grow up, they're still going to be wise kids. And awesome. so then we, we uh, briefly talk about the different four quadrants of wealth, like okay. Robert Kiyosaki's okay. four quadrants, you know, becoming an employee and uh, self-employed uh, business person or investor. And we, 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 one of the last things we do is uh, we, I, I use the CEOs, the, the, my client CEOs, I ask them to actually record a video in which they tell their own story. I give them three minutes on video in which they tell their own story to those kids. That's so awesome. they explain their story, how they went, most of them, it's funny, but they were poor when they were kids and they became CEOs of very important corporations. So we show those videos to those kids. And the final thing that we do on that workshop, two hour workshop, is a meditation. So we have those kids, we'll, we teach them how to meditate, we give them very precise instructions. Hey, you put your, your legs like this, and then you put like your hands here, make sure you don't have any, any bag, anything, any, any toolbox, anything. And then we put a very specific uh, uh, music, very powerful, and we are for 20 minutes with those very, very strong, solid, powerful, inspiring... Um, Mantras? Uh, affirmations. 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 And then the kids just have an amazing experience... Life-changing. ...that summarize, summarize everything that we have been teaching them for the previous one hour that and 20 minutes, 40 amazing. minutes. And what age group do you choose? We have three age groups. We, have, okay. we deal with kids between 7 years old and 15 years old, uh, three different groups, three years each. Have you been able to see results so far? Have you been heard stories? Exactly. We are all about we are all about impact. We are all, all about impact. So we make sure that we during the workshop we are really paying attention into the kids. We make sure that we know um, that who are the kids that are maybe more participating more or they're being more 
uh, proactive in answering the questions because I mean we, we play with them we do lots of different activities so we're paying a lot of attention on what they do and how they do things so we identify a, a series of kits that we think can be good a good fit for the, let's say the rest of the journey you and then we up with them and then uh, we bring the, the parents in and we start talking with the parents as well when we go back to the community after a few months or we talk to the community leaders we always ask them okay so what have you seen because again, if there's no impact, we did, what we did was really uh, not worth it, but obviously it, is, it always is. So what do, we, what do we see? The community leaders and the parents tell us the following things. They tell us they have, quest they have answers that they didn't have before. They have questions that they didn't raise before. They have a different way of, think, of, of seeing their future. They are, they are really more onto, onto wealth, onto money. They understand what the flow of money is. Okay. So suddenly we realized that all those concepts that we shared with them for two hours, they really got like engraved, imprinted. exactly, imprinted in their mind. So that's definitely something that we pay a lot of attention because otherwise we, uh, it wouldn't be, we wouldn't be fulfilling the mission of the, our foundation. That sounds absolutely amazing. We want to thank you, not only for being here with us, for sharing that story, but you. for what you're doing. Thank you. We are really um, sure, we do believe in the fact that the world can change and that people like you are going to make a significant impact thank you in the world thank you again for what you do thank you very much this was angel ribo and i'm mirna we want to thank you also for sharing with us